Welcome back, everybody. This is Chapter 5 uh, of the Statistics Modeling the World curriculum. Uh, in this chapter, we're going to be comparing distributions. Um, in this first video, uh, we're going to be showing how to construct a box plot also. And then we'll look at those things. Not a box. What? A box plot. Uh, and then we'll be showing uh, how to compare them, uh, box plot with a histogram or two histograms together in the next video. So let's uh, jump right in here, talk about the big picture. Um, we can answer much more interesting questions about variables when we compare two distrib different distributions of the same groups. So for example, uh, what we have here is the average wind speed for every day in 1989. This is collecting uh, every single average wind speed from a particular location um, all year long. And this is an interesting uh, graph because it tells us that the average wind speed is a graph that is skewed to the right, right? We can kind of see the tail there. Um, it's unimodal, uh, not symmetric. It's skewed to the right. Looks like it's got a center. Uh, a median of about 1.9 here. Uh, its interquartile range is between 1.15 and 2.93. Um, and uh, a full range from he there to 8 point from 0.2 to 8.67. Uh, so there's some interesting things to say about that. However, uh, it's it's not as interesting as it could be because uh, there's a lot that this graph doesn't tell us. For example, every day is a very broad set of data, um, but you know as well as I know that the weather is going to vary significantly from uh, depending on the season. So we have here, again, description. It's unimodal. It's skewed to the right. Uh, the big kind of question that we have that comes up is uh, we've got to definitely have a possible outlier out here um, in uh, that being an 8.67 as the, the average wind speed. That's going to be uh, 80. Those are all scaled. So that's like 86 degrees uh, or, excuse me, miles per hour. Um, so the thing is, is the histogram doesn't tell us a whole lot about what's going on with the with the outliers, or even if this is an outlier. Um, so what we want to do is use a new plot uh, so that we can see some of these things that a histogram leaves out. So uh, what we'll use is called a box plot, um, and the box plot it's actually called a box and whisker plot if you want to be really technical. A box and whisker plot uses the five number summary uh, to report the numbers in the distribution. Uh, so these five numbers we convert into a, um, a plot on the graph. So its construction is uh, very useful to compare groups because it allows us to see the quartiles uh, within a histogram to see exactly where the middle 50% is, uh, whereas on a, a, an actual histogram it, it's tough to see. And so comparing those things uh, as a box plot is really helpful. Uh, box plots are also really good for pointing out what is and isn't an outlier. Again, on a histogram we just kind of have to guess this might be an outlier, uh, but with a box plot and the five number summary we can actually see exactly what it would be. So the way that we construct a box plot. Uh, we can draw, this can be a single vertical axis or a horizontal axis. Um, we make sure that the, the axis here is labeled consistently so we can see that these are all going up by 1.5s. Uh, we're drawing a box and <clears throat> with a line in the middle. Now this box, this top one is the upper quartile also known as the third quartile. The bottom one is the first quartile, or the lower quartile. And this middle one here is the median. So that's the box part of the box and whisker plot. Um, what we're going to then do is erect a fence. Now what the fences do is they tell us where the outliers are. Uh, the anything that is 1.5 IQRs or 1.5 interquartile ranges above the upper quartile is going to be considered a uh, an outlier. 
anything that is 1.5 below the IQR is also going to be considered an outlier. Um, these fences can help construct the box plot. Uh, we don't actually draw these on the final display. Um, but we put them up there to help with the construction. Uh, so you can kind of see here visually, this is uh, about one more box plot, one more interquartile range. And so there's my 1.5 interquartile ranges. And then we've got one more interquartile range there with that. So that's 1.5 interquartile ranges. Here's the one, right? There's the 0.5. Um, if you want to have exact measurements here, what you need to do is take those values from the five point, uh, the five number summary, and do the calculations. So, for example, uh, we're going to back this up a little bit. Uh, if we want to find what the uh, interquartile range is, we take 2.93 minus 1.15, which is uh, what? 1.6. Seven, eight, right? I'm doing that in my head. Hope that's right. So that's my interquartile range. <coughs> to figure out what 1.5 <coughs> interquartile ranges is, we take that 1.78 <coughs> and we multiply it by 1.5. So if we go back down here, <coughs> we're going to take 1.78 uh, times 1.5 and we're going to add that on to the upper quartile to find this fence. And then we're going to take 1.78 times 1.15. And we are going to uh, subtract that from the lower quartile to find this fence. Any numbers outside of that range are considered outliers. So if it's outside the fence, it's an outlier. So we use the fences to draw the whiskers. Uh, this one down here goes to the minimum. Notice that it doesn't cross the fence, so it doesn't approach there. Now, if you remember the data, we had an 8.9 something. So typically, that would go way up here. But the whisker only goes to the fence. So the fence is here. So that's where we draw the whisker to. Um, it does not include outliers. Now, the outliers come out this way. So here's that big 8.9 day, that one that's definitely an outlier. But then we actually have three other data points in that original histogram uh, that are considered outliers because they're 1.5 interquartile ranges away. But it was difficult to see that in the actual histogram itself. So any outliers that uh, come out there, we use a special symbol. Sometimes it's dots, sometimes it's stars. Um, but we use a special symbol to indicate that those things are outliers. This one, in fact, is an is a even special outlier because it is a super outlier. It is a far outlier. It is three IQRs away. Uh, one, two, three, right? It's even farther than three interquartile ranges away, which makes it really far out there away from the rest of the data. And that is how we construct a box plot. Uh, so in the next video, we're going to compare box plots to histograms and histograms to histograms and make sure that uh, you are able to write all of the correct descriptions, uh, especially for those uh, coming up in the AP exam. So uh, you can check out the next video, and we will see you later. Bye.